No, I'm all right now. No. Finish the course, it says. The chest infection could come back. Have you sorted out what approach you're going to take to your problem? Well, I think Katie's abusing the friendship. I mean, given what Sammy got up to. Mm, Katie, too, don't forget. Yeah, but it was a sister's idea, Max. Oh, I didn't exactly see a gun held to Katie's head. Well, I've been over all that with her. Hey, what do you think of this one? Ah, oh, not bad. See, the problem you have, now that you and Katie are friends, well, friends tend to ask for things that probably even family wouldn't. Oh, so you think it's fine for Katie to ask me to keep Sammy on? No. Oh, so I'm right to sack her then? No. Oh, so what are you saying? I'm saying that you've got a manager to sort all that out. Yeah, but Saul's already done one of us. Well, exactly. Well, leave it at that then. Yeah, but I feel bad about Louise. My mum and dad have split up and she's stuck in the middle. Oh, well, take Sammy back then. <laughs> but I don't want it working there. Well, look, what do you prefer? The rock or the hard place? Hmm? <laughs> That's awful. You were out early, weren't you? Needed to stretch my legs. Breathing that fresh morning air. Getting those blood cells livened up. Give the body the boost it needs. Well, did it work? It's flaming freezing. Almost caught me death of cold. Oh, I should have wrapped up a bit more. So why didn't you? Because Rain Mundo has still got me leather. Hey, and I tell you what, you're not going to get that back because it suits him right down to a T. Whoa. Oh, chill. What's all the figures about? I'm just working out my loss and profits on the ale we got. Well, it's all profits, isn't it? It was Nick. Oh, sorry. So how much more gear have you got to shift that? Loads. Is that too much? <laughs> yeah, I warned you, didn't I? What about? About working out your market strategy. What? Listen, you don't think the Sopranos go on some big heist without working out where the merchandise is going, do you? You would have thought everyone would want cheap spirits. Yeah, they do. But they want other things as well, like clothes and food. Yeah, we'll have to get some of that next time, won't I? Yeah, well, if you organise your next job the way you've organised this one, you won't shift anything. Remember, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Yeah, don't worry. Oh, I've got a cunning plan. Oh, I've heard that one before and all. Oh, yeah. Have either of you two got something I could wear today, please? Yeah? You can borrow one of Emily's thongs. You are not too old for a clip round the ear, young man. Taking the notice of him, Jesse. I'll have something for you. Thanks. I thought I'd slip along to the charity shop later, get a few bits. Oh. Ray's got one of Mike Dicko's trackies on. Suits him and all. Mm, good for him. Hey, is it OK if I, um, borrow the phone? Yeah, go on. Oh, that reminds me, um, Jesse, your bank manager, Bank, says he wants some information about share certificates or something. Oh, right. You didn't mention it to anyone, did you? Hello, Steve. Nice to meet you. No. I mean, not that it's a secret or anything. Have you gone on today? I hope Ray's warm enough in that caravan. It was freezing last night. Oh, he's not there anymore. Where is he? He's moved into my dick house. He never told me. Well, I don't think he was over the moon about it himself. I think he'd much rather be here with you. Uh, well, I don't like being without him either. I miss him. But you know, this daughter business—it just came right out of the blue. Can't you just forgive and forget? Nikki did with Jerome. She's got such a, well, mature grip on things, hasn't she? Hey, you know, she's a bright girl, gift to the gap, great laugh. Jeans from my side. Mm. And she talks a lot of sense. So why don't you take a leaf out of her book and start talking again? Yes, so if you can uh, leave our milk outside number 10 until further notice. Yeah, OK, no problem. Thanks. Morning. Do you know, I still can't get over it. Now you're alive, all this can be replaced. So I've never been so close to death. I thought my whole life would flash in front of me. And it didn't. Oh. I'll probably fall asleep anyway. No, not yet. No, Katie, you're not putting pressure on me. Yeah, I will. I'll get it sorted out today. But listen, you'll understand, won't you, if... Oh, well, look, we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. I'll speak to you later. Draw. You know, the more I think about that bungalow, the more I definitely think the gods were smiling down on that family. It'll cost a fortune to repair the emotional trauma, months of stress. What's wrong? That was Casey. 
Asking me if I've made my mind up about Sammy, yes. And? Well, I'm gonna speak to Sol. You need to step back. No, Max, I can't. Not on this one. Just this one? Yes. Look, once you start getting into decision-making over there, you'll be on the slippery slope to doing more and more. I don't think so. It'll happen, and our quality time with the children and each other will suffer. You made the choice to be a mother, now you stick to it. Max, I've got to step in just this once. Fine, but you make sure both Sol and you agree what to do. We can't be 100% on everything. He's a good manager, and you want to keep him, don't you? All right. Know how much it's going to cost to repair it all yet? No. They've written thousands. Scary situation. Jesse and I would like to say how grateful we are for you and Tim for getting us out alive. Well, don't worry. Anyone would have done it. I don't think so, lad. All those flames and smoke, some people be terrified. Yeah, I was terrified. Yeah, but you got stuck in, didn't you, hey? Oh, here's my better half. Which posse are you, Adam? Is it the Brocky Massive? What are you talking about? <laughs> You're trying. Oh, right. It suits you, Jess. Yeah, it's not quite my colours, though, is it? Listen, I'll catch you later. Thanks again, lad. And uh, I'll see you right about that. Oh, no, don't be daft. He's a good lad. I was thinking of getting him and Tim a gift myself. Well, uh, can't we get something together? I mean, we're still a couple, aren't we? Have you spoken to the electricity people? Yeah, they've been and gone and switched everything off officially. Good. I didn't know you'd moved in there. Yeah, it was nice of them, wasn't it? Uh, how are you, uh, sleeping then? Well, a bigger bed would be nice. Then I could fit you back in. Oh, I didn't think you'd want me still around. I can't hold you past against you forever, can I? I've caused you a lot of grief, haven't I, Jess? I should have just thumped you and been done with it. Well, still time. Don't tempt me. <laughs> Um, hey, do you fancy a cup of tea and we can go over the insurance lists, hey? OK. So, how's your kid? He's all right. I think the bullying's stopped now as well. See? I told you, all he had to do was toughen out. You off? I'm gonna get this drink shifted. Do you know where yet? Pubs. Ooh, that you can't even plan. Yeah, well, it's the best option. Other people do it. I reckon it's risky, though. Listen, shifting any kind of hooky gear is full of risks. You've just got to minimise them. Yeah, we know that. So tell me, how are you going to shift it? Well, we're going to load up Steve's car, go into the pub, and just ask anyone on the side if they want a bottle of whiskey. It's a doddle. Which pubs? We'll just drive around a few places. Listen, you need a bit of advice on what to do if you step on someone else's patch. But before that, when are you going? When we've loaded Steve's car. And who do you think's going to be drinking at this time of day? Oldish pubs are the best. The early drinkers might be plonkies and by. How are you going to get the booze into the pubs? Um, carrier. <laughs> In what? Uh, boxes. Bit obvious, isn't it? A bag then. Oh, and have you got some? Uh, no. Think basic and get a few. Go on. It's ignoring the details that get you nicked. I reckon this is too risky. No. Look, everyone we know has bought a bottle off us. They're probably bathing in it. So what we've got to do, we've got to get out there and sell. Don't worry. I'm cool about it. Stay. <gasps> Whatever. OK. Now, remember two key things. One, only deal in cash. Two, don't let anyone blag you into giving them credit. And it's the women who usually charm you on that one. So, no money, no whiskey. And the best of British. We might need to do a bit more membership marketing. Local papers, maybe some flyers. Well, do we definitely need it? Well, spring's on the way and people want to look good for the holidays. Will be costed it all out? Not yet. Well, let me have the quotes and we'll sit down and talk. Fine. Which is what I think we need to do right now. <sighs> I'm not even sure which seat to sit in. I'll put the manager's seat. It's rubbish. No, Em got the book for Christmas and he's predicted loads of things. I don't care if she's got the DVD. That Nostradamus is full of fairy stories. No, he predicted world wars and everything, which is boss seeing as though we lived 500 years ago. Hey, what do you reckon? Two. That's right, see, for starters. Yeah, yeah. Predict the future. 
Yeah, well, he's done it. He even said that they float New York. He didn't. He said they'd be shaking earth or something. Yeah, two rocks shaking in the USA. Which is the Twin Towers getting blown up, isn't it? Yeah. Some paper in there to stop it from rattling. Yeah. The USA didn't even exist when he wrote all that. Which just shows he's a genius predicting it all. Come on. He had a few wild guesses, and saying that there's going to be a war in a few hundred years' time isn't exactly big stuff, is it? No, he's predicted other things which are spot on. I'll jot down some stuff for you if you like. Yeah, a flood in the Sea of Tranquility, um, a big kickoff in Mars in a hundred years. See, it's easy. Yeah, well, I believe him anyway. Yeah, well, it's just like that horoscope nonsense. Just makes people a bit of money. They are. Did he predict that there'd be big sales today? Yeah, well, he better add it on. <laughs> yeah, well, they are. Oh, why am I carrying this? You said you know the score. No, you know about as much as I do. Yeah, and I'm watching the car. No, we're in it together. We're a team. Go on, lock up. Chop, chop! I took her on because she was by far the best candidate. Yeah, but didn't you get any kinds of... Oh... I don't know, an uneasy feeling about her. Sammy wanted a job. She was pushy. So am I. And I bet you didn't get where you are without being the same. I admired the keenness for the job. She gets more than pushy. She was polite to customers. Increased the membership. That kind of pushy the business needs. I'm talking about marketing. And she was a great front of house person. Look, as far as you're concerned, I screwed up. But I didn't realise I was getting caught up in some heavy domestic problem. And I'm sorry. Now, up until that cock-up, I'd been very happy to drive 140 miles up and down the motorway for work. But if you're going to hold it against me... No, I won't do that. Look, if you want to reinstate Sammy, fine, that's up to you. <laughs> Why the change of heart? Oh, Sal, it's a long story. If I take her back, then everything will be down to me. Well, you know what you're taking on. So if you think she's worth the risk? I'd offer you another cup, but I've just used the less of the milk. Hey, Gerald's got a big claim in. Must be a few thousand pounds in there. You don't think he's on the fiddle, do you? No, no. I just didn't realise he had so much stuff. Well, I'm sure the insurance man will tell him what he can claim for. I'll give him a ring and ask him. Why don't I do that? Take some of the pressure off you. Oh, would you, Jess? Oh, would you like another cup of tea? You've got no milk. I'll go and get some. Hmm. Where's the insurance fella's number? It's in the folder, the kitchen. Won't be long. It's a doddle. Nostradamus rules. <sighs> Not him again. The First World War, the Second World War, it's all in his book, mate. Yeah. Didn't he say Madeleine Monroe was going to die as well? Probably. And the last eclipse. He's right about it all. So go on. What's his next big prediction, then? Oh, I don't know. Em will know. I'll ask her. Hey, it's a pity you weren't doing this for Christmas. Would have made the fortune. Yeah, they've been gone by now, though, wouldn't they? Well, I'll tell you what. The next booze job that we'll do, we'll do it in November. And then we'll hit the pubs just before Christmas, when everyone's in the mood. Next booze job. Yeah, look how much money we're making. Tim, I'm a mechanic who's been sidetracked. But this is well paid. A one-off. Come on, no one's got hurt. It's not like the scummy stuff, like screwing houses or anything. Save the sales path for our customers. Yeah, can't keep them waiting. Be back in a minute. This is excellent. Hi, uh, um, oh, Casey said you wanted to see me. Yeah, sit down. I'm considering whether or not to offer your job back. Are you serious? I wouldn't waste your time or mine messing about. Well, what'll Jackie Dixon say about that? Well, we've already talked. So it was her idea? She's left it up to me. I wonder what made her change her mind. She didn't go into it. So it's all down to you now? Yeah. 
but I've got to tell you, you've caused me some serious embarrassment. You knew Jackie would kick off when she saw you here, so you stitched me right up. And I do not like being made a fool of. Raymond, Did you see your Jess? Yes, she's in here. We're having a nice cup of tea and a good chat. Ah, oh, great, I'm made up for you. Listen, how about the other day? I was a bit hasty, you know, judgmental. These things happen, don't they? Uh, it wasn't until I spoke to Nicky that I thought, yeah. Yeah, forgive and forget. Life's too short, eh? Ah, oh, she's a good girl here. Great company. I couldn't wait any longer. I've got your favourite, Apple Charlotte. Stuff your Apple Charlotte. Hey. That photograph in there of your... your floozy. Well, it's just a photograph. And why haven't I got just a photograph, eh, of my Greg and Jason? Everyone burnt because of your stupidity. I'm sorry, love. The only one left is of air. What's it all about, eh? Oh, Jess, come back, Jess, please. Hey, take it easy, lads. What's up? I have just sold another five bottles. And the barman wants more? Go ahead, then. Yeah, but be quick. The landlord's back in a minute. How many does he want? You get another three. Put it on your own. Woo! I am really sorry, you know. What were you doing getting a job here? Well, it's something I can do, and I need this job so much. I thought I could fix things after, well, you know, but I shouldn't have used you like this. I could have walked out of here because Jackie made me look an idiot. And it was all down to you. So I'm just here while you wipe the floor with me? I took you on because you were the best on paper. And then you proved yourself in your work. I told you I was good. All I'm interested in is what my staff work like. I've got to make a go of this place, understand? Sure. So if you want to come back, the job's yours. But you've got to knuckle down and do this for your daughter. Remember, she was why you needed the job. You're a star. Do you know that? If you say yes to coming back, I want you to treat me with the same respect that I gave you. For your history. Are we the finest salesman or what? Hey, if it wasn't double glazed, we'd be millionaires. Hey, we still can be millionaires because every single penny is a profit. Hey! Daddy, come on. Believe it. How many did they get? Just a couple of bottles. I don't know. Can't turn your back for a minute these days. I know. I blame the parents. But it wasn't me anyway. What do you want? Um, I was hoping to see Jackie. Well, she's busy, very busy. Look, why don't you try talking to us through the UN? They're normally very good at that sort of thing. What's going on? She was just going. Um, I wanted to say thanks, you know, for letting me back in the health club. Well, I left it off to Sol. Look, I'm going to take Harry out, so I'll leave you to deal with your staff. All right. Come on, Tiger. It's lovely, isn't he? Yeah. But he might not have had a mum and dad together if your sick plan has worked. Anyway, you were saying? It's just a photo. Something you hang on to. I suppose you've got a lock of her hair that you hung on to as well, have you? It was in my possessions, and I, I forgot about it. Why keep it? Well, I used to take it out when I had a bad day with uh, Rini. It's every day of my married life. Ray. Oh, look. So I had a fling. And I kept the girl's photo. It doesn't mean anything. It happens all the time. You did love her, didn't you? Let's have a cuppa. Have you looked at that photo since you've been married to me? Yeah, when Helen came onto the scene, started to delve and look into things, you know. But you see, it's, it's, it's all in my past. I'm married to you. And I, I miss you. I love you. Right, so next time, no ale on the back seat, even under a blanket. Yep, and we take less out and only use the boot. Yeah, still, good start, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you fancy coming out again tonight? Yeah, we'll have to. I mean, it was good morning, but there's still plates of the stuff left. Hey, don't worry. I'll get rid of it. Yeah, well, hopefully before I pick up my pension. <laughs> so we split what we made this morning, now. Yeah, sure. There you go, partner. Yeah. <laughs>
Do you think it'd be out of order if uh, I asked Michael and Rachel if you could stay here? Well, don't put any pressure on me. Oh, I'm sure it'd be all right. And, and I don't think Ron would mind, given the circumstances. Um, well, OK, ask. But if you sense it's awkward, don't worry. We'll just have to be content with spending the days with each other. All right, Ray. Hey, you two, come on, the pair of you. Over here. I've got something for them, from the pair of us. What have you two been up to, then? This nothing. and that. Well, when I say nothing, I mean this and that. No, you were right first time. Nothing. I don't want to nag, but, you know, there are jobs out there if you look for them, boys. Yeah, well, I'll have a look tomorrow, won't I? Right, here we are, then. On behalf of Jesse and myself, we'd like to say a big thank you for rescuing us. Yeah, we dread to think what would have happened. There's one for each of you there. Look, oh, that's really nice, but... Yeah, we don't expect any reward. Oh, never mind all that. Just accept them as a token of our appreciation. Don't you like whiskey? Yeah, yeah, I love it. Same here. Thanks. Enjoy it, won't you? Those two are speechless. Yeah, that's what humility does to people. Hey, look, I'm gonna get some more of the rubbish out of the house now. Okay, I'll go and ring the insurance fella. I'm, uh, I'm glad we're back on track, Jess. I suppose I did overreact about that photo. Oh, yeah, by the way, you, you didn't throw it away, did you? No, why? Uh, oh, it's, it's nothing, but I just thought it might be nice for, for Helen to see what her mum looked like all those years ago, you know. It's still in your folder. All right. But the point is, it wasn't my choice to let you back, it was Sol's. But you must have okayed it. Yeah, I delegate. But if I'd been there as manager, there's no way I'd have even let you get across that door. I know. But it's important you understand. I didn't get the job in your club to wind you up. I genuinely needed it because of Louise. But did you really think I'd keep you on? I was desperate. And, well, I suppose I was relying on your good nature. Well, I'm really low on that where you're concerned. So this is it, your last chance. You've played the Louise cards once, and that was it, so don't mess it up. I won't. And honestly, Jackie, I am sorry about what I did. Don't forget all that. And don't bother knocking on this door again, either, cos this is strictly a boss-employee relationship. I'm not doing it for you. I told you it was a one-off. Nah, that was the beginning. The last thing I want is you upset. Oh, yeah, well, you should have thought about that before you did a kamikaze job on the plumbing. One job, Bev's getting on. It's always an accident, isn't it? Do you want me blaming Bancroft? Catch Brookie again on Wednesday at 8, and it's Friday night comedy all the way here on 4. Father Ted feels his manly urges next. going with her, aren't you? I'm going to work. What? Well, she'll be all right. I've organised taxis for the first week. Sammy, what are you on about? It's a first date in a new school. You've got to go with her. Oh, you here again? Yes, Timon. Isn't he always? Come. All right. All right, Bella. Aye, aye. 
Can I interest anyone in a cup, eh? No, go ahead, please. Oh, right, sir. Chamomile or strawberry cake? You want? Oh, Jimmy, just a tea bag and a bit of milk. Oh, no. What? It's a fine the man from the video shop from three weeks ago. That'll be well melted by now. Like we're not in enough debt. <laughs> <laughs> I've been staying away, to be honest. You all right, gorgeous? <laughs> well, uh, carry on with the scraping. Then, like, uh, make a start on the paper, you know. Are you sure you don't mind? Not at all, though. No. This will be fine a good match, eh? No bother. I've got loads of rolls hidden in the garage. Ray's very good at hiding things. Uh, I'll get on then. Do you have to go and see your dad? You know I do. Come on, back. Don't leave me with it. Don't you have a choice? Oh, no. What? It's a day for the redetermination thing. 25th of Feb. What's that? I've been dreading this coming. It's no big deal. I've got to go to court. Well, all we do is we turn up, let them know our income, and they adjust the payments accordingly. So the judge's chamber's in town. No, Rachel, will you stop flapping? Why does everything have to come down to money? I'd come with you if I could, you know that, don't you? Couldn't you just come with me today? I can't, babe. It's my first day back at work, and if I put a foot wrong, Mrs Farnham would have a field day. I don't want to go on my own. Oh, you'll be fine. Look at you, you're gorgeous. Now, have you got your phone? And the number? Right, if you need anything at all, ring me. Okay. Oh, there's a good girl. Now, give us a kiss, and I'll see you later. Okay, I'm gone, Lou. I'll come with you. Really? But you're in work yourself, aren't you? I'll phone Nisha tell her I'll be late. Oh, cool. I'll see if the taxi's there. Thanks, Kate. Don't worry, I'm not doing it for you. No matter how often I go through this list for the insurance, I still keep remembering something else. I suppose it's all the personal stuff, like photos you can't replace. All mine went. May I had a couple put away somewhere safe. Forgotten about, if you say so. So, what happens next? Well, the insurance company looks at what's gone. Then they top up a lifetime of memories in pounds, shillings and pence. At least no one was there. More's the pity. Right, you ready to roll? Yeah, come on. Tell him we were asking after him, won't you? Oh, oh, yeah, would you mention that I've had a word with the builder? He's, he's taking a look at our bungalow, you know. He's going to do you an estimate for your upstairs ceiling. All right. Nice one, Ray. See you later. You're not really going to tell them, are you? What do you think? You can't keep it from him forever. I'm not checking. I've told him about great grannies. Tell him what? That it's a sinking ship. That is different. How is it? I don't want to worry him. Well, neither do I, Jack. Well, I think you should both come clean. Your dad will go mad if he comes home and finds out you've been keeping stuff from him. See you later. See ya. See ya. <sighs> Two weeks rental. Plus, God knows how much of a replacement. It's not all bad news. Claim for the tape off your insurance. Just a drop in the great big overdraft ocean. Yeah, well, I told you to bump up your claim, didn't I? I'm not doing that. Just makes everyone else pay through the nose. They all do it. Yeah, but well, I won't. Look, what's more important? Telling a little white lie to an insurance company that's probably ripped off millions in its time, or getting yourself a decent education. Staying true to your principles. Mm. It's a bit deep for this time in the morning, isn't it? It's <laughs> the way you feel. Anyway, I'll leave all the insurance scams to me. Wonderful brother-in-law. <laughs> so how much have you got left? Two less than there was yesterday. Two bottles? In less than five hours? That's three more than what you got rid of. This is a joke. We're gonna have to sort something out. Like what? I don't know. Like a proper system or something. Especially if we're gonna be doing this on a regular basis. What do you mean? Me and you, going into business. Look, I told you it was a one-off. Nah, that was the beginning. But me and you are going on to bigger and better things. Not interested. <sighs> yeah, okay. I'll come back to you in a couple of months. When you're still cashing your gyro and spending every Wednesday down the job club. Look, all I wanted was enough money to set myself up in business. That's me done. What, your home servicing business? <laughs> Come on, we've got a good little number going here. No, look, it was a good buzz, the money was tasty, but that's it for me. I'm back on the right side of the law. And there's nothing I can say to change your mind? Nope. Go on the auctions tomorrow to get a van. Fancy coming? Nah.
And what else are you gonna do? Lie in bed thinking about how much ale you've got to sell. What time? I'll pick you up after dinner. On my way. Medication in there? Yeah. Look, I brought you a picture of the kids. I bet the little faces on them, eh? Cheeky little grins. Hey, come on, to be an all upset. No, I'm not love, I'm alright, host. Oh, come on, Dad was supposed to be cheering you up, not putting you on a downer. I don't know, I've missed them, you know. Then I've forgotten who I am by the time I get out of this place. Jimmy, you haven't seen that piece of paper, have you? What bit of paper, love? Um, me list for me and Anathol's left on here. Oh, been that this morning. What? Joke. <sighs> Haven't you got an appointment at the uni? I was tomorrow my tutor's been off. Well, you should be getting your head down, catching up on all that stuff you lost. Well, there's no point starting something until I know where to stand, is there? Oh. Do you mind I've just cleaned that? All right, keep your wig on. <sighs> Wonder how Bev's getting on? Yeah, fine. From what I heard, the bar's history. Oh, well, that's not what she said to me. Hasn't Christy Murray cleaned her house? He has, but according to her, she's going to get the place up and running again. Hey, so she might be looking for staff. Really? Mm. If she can get the cash together. She need help. Well, what do you think? Where are you going? Bit of business. What about your soup? You are. I'm not hungry. Woo! I go round to see Bev. See what the score is. Yeah, we'll have to try, innit? Might join you, kid. Aha, at last. Jimmy, what's this? Oh, mind that. Just a reminder, you know, uh, in case things take a turn for the worse, you know. To yourself? Yeah. Is that another one? Um, yeah, yeah. Because I get this bad? Probably not, but, you know, um, well, that stuff I got off the internet, you know, it said to, um, well, err on the side of caution. You don't feel like you're getting, I don't know, manic or anything, do you? As if. No! I feel sound. <laughs> Just, uh, want to be prepared, you know, for any eventuality. <laughs> Time, you know. Where have you told them I am? Holiday. For five months. Yeah, well, these places are like holiday camps, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I wish. How's Rachel then? She's sound, yeah. She says to say hello. So do Ray and Jesse. How are they? Yeah, fine, I think. I haven't really, really seen much of them. Have they found somewhere to stay, yeah? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, have you and Rachel been all right rattling around in that big house all on your own? Yeah, yeah. Not that I'm worried, like. Well, there's no need for you to worry. No, I'm not, love. Not anymore. You see, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, and... Well, to be honest with you, I've had a real change of heart. But what? A life, I suppose. You know, my first few weeks in here, my head was chocker, just going over and over everything. What happened, Anthea, the mess I made of things. Hey, you haven't made a mess of anything. No, love, it's got to be said. I have. And when push comes to shove, I've had my priorities all wrong. What do you mean, Dad? Well, I've been sitting in here getting myself all wound up about the house. Look, well, I've told you there's nothing wrong with the house. The house is fine. And the business. Dad, you're going to end up making yourself ill. Yeah, when all that really matters is you two and the kids. I'm telling you, being stuck in here has been a road to the massless job. Dad. Sleeping in that little cell. Locked away from me family. The people that I love and I care about. I'm telling you, it's made me realise that it's, it's you that's important. 
No bricks and mortar and profit and loss. Hey, come on, don't be getting all upset again. You'll be home soon. I know. And when I am, love, I want us to have a new beginning. Right? Ah, it's only a video. Jerome's fault like he was meant to take it back ages ago. Are you getting on with yours? Okay. I think we'd better just bite the bullet and send it off. Let's have a look. Hey, you. Blimey, Nan. I know you said you had a few shares, but it's private, so keep your hands off. Where's Ray? He's out. Gone to buy wallpaper paste. Well, if you two saws out your differences. I am trying my best, believe you me. Look, I know I haven't been the best dad in the world. Oh, don't say that. You've been a brilliant dad. And I know that you feel that you sometimes can't confide in me. As if. Look, let's get it right, hey? When you had little Harry, I didn't even know you were pregnant. And all this other stuff lately with them bailiffs coming around, you shouldn't have to keep secrets like that. I mean, they're the sort of things that you should be able to come and talk to me about. Well, the thing is, Dad, I mean, you're not exactly the most laid-back of people, are you? Well, all right, then. I wasn't. But I am now. And I want you to know that in the future you can come and talk to me about anything, and I mean anything to you. Are you sure you've been taking your medication? I'm a change, man. And as far as I'm concerned from now on, you two are the only thing that matters. If you're happy, then I'm happy. I don't know what to say. Oh, my dad's right. We shouldn't keep secrets from each other. Yeah, I know, but... Mike, just tell him. Tell me what? No, 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 it's, it's nothing. Mike! What's the matter? Um. Well, we've just been... We've been having a few problems at home. Problems? Ale! Why have you got loads of ale? That's not your concern. The fact is, is that I've got it and you need it. Right, so you've robbed it and you need to get rid of it, Charmish. Do I look like someone who'd do that? Ask a stupid question. Look, it's all good stuff, like. Uh, what have you got? Anything and everything. And how much? Ain't not a bottle. No, how much have you got? How many cases? Enough. Right, well, I'll have um, half a dozen bottles of vodka, whiskey, gin, brandy, and uh, any liqueurs you've got, as long as you can do it for a five each. Oh. Do me a large on a fiver. I might as well give it away. I'd consider 750. No chance. I can easily get rid of it elsewhere, you know. Why don't you then? Doesn't bother me. It's been going like hot kicks. Oh, great. I'm always pleased to hear people are doing well. Look, well, seeing as though it's you, I'll knock it down a bit. I was about six quid a bottle, and you can't get that anywhere. Buy that is my final offer. Take it or leave it. I'll bring it round the savvy. Thank you. Dad, the reason we didn't tell you is because we didn't want to worry you. Jackie, there's nothing you can say to me that's going to upset me. Not after what I've been through over the last few months. Go on. Well, um, I had a bit of an accident in the loft. An accident? You're all right, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's just that was, um, well, I was up there messing about with the aerial wire, and I wasn't looking where I was going. And well, what happened was I stood on a pipe. What, a water pipe? Yeah. So we've had a burst? Well, kind of. Well, we've either had a burst or we haven't had a burst. Well, no, it, it's only a bit of water. How much water? Well, the bedroom got the worst of it. You flooded the bedroom? And the living room. You what? It was an accident. You flooded the house. It's only just been decorated. No, you just said it doesn't matter about the house as long as we're OK. I tell you what, Michael, you have surpassed yourself this time. It was an accident. It's always an accident, isn't it? Do you want me blaming bankrupt? Look, Dad, I'll get it sorted. Too right, you'll get it sorted. It'll just take a little bit of time, that's all. Eight weeks you've got, Michael. Eight weeks. And if my house isn't exactly as I left it when I get out of this place, it's going to be hell to pay, and it's going to come out of your pocket. Dad, you didn't mean it. Well, I mean it. Get it sorted, Michael. You're back. Good news travels fast. Mm, love the coat. It's Tim's. Mine got beans, along with everything else. Oh, you should have come to me. I've got a wardrobe full of stuff I wouldn't look at anymore. 
I don't know where they fit me. I don't know, we're not that big. No, honestly, um, my mum's just sent me a check. Be able to get a few bits with that. If you know anyone who thinks you're those. Hey, listen. Heard any more from the other one? Rocky Massiano. Well, yeah, another sausage. I reckon that's the last we've heard from her. Although, I wouldn't mind getting in contact with Lance. Still no sign. No, I keep leaving messages, but we won't answer them. Oh. Is it true that you're opening your bath? Yeah, Valentine's night. Oh. You're going to be a bit hard pressed, aren't you? I'll manage. Oh. You still looking for staff? Not at the moment, no. All right. Well, taking on a load of other people, have you? No, I'll be in touch in a couple of weeks. So, uh, who's opening it out now? No one. What do you think? It's neater, isn't it? I thought you said you were going to match it up. Well, it's the nearest colour I had. Hmm, right. I'll, uh, clear this stuff away. What are we going to do? We'll just have to get it sorted before my dad gets out. Mike, we can't afford to feed ourselves. Never mind paying for decorators and builders and heaven knows what else. Oh, Rachel, the last thing I want is you upset. Oh, yeah, we should have thought about that before you did a kamikaze job on the plumbing. That wasn't my fault. Well, then whose fault was it? You know what? I'm sick of you messing up. And I'm sick of being skint. Oh, oh sorry. Is she OK? Um, yeah, she's just... Well, she's just a bit shocked by the wallpaper. <sighs> I'll get him to take it down. No, no, you're not right, Jess. Well, um, we'll get the money to get them new place it eventually. Hey, listen, I was just wondering there. How about if me and our Nicky give you a hand? Oh, I'm sorry, Jim, but you know the score. I'm skint. You can't do it on your own. I'm going to have to. Well, we'll do it for free. What? We can't do that. Do you right? We can't. No, I mean, you know, count up the hours and then pay us when the money comes rolling in. It's really nice here, Jim, but... No buts! You gave me a job when I needed one. Hang on, Jimmy. I'm not sure about working for nothing. Oh, we'll get it eventually. Be like saving up, won't it? I suppose it'd be just like working a week in hand, wouldn't it? And I would pay, as honest. I just need a couple of nights nice takings to get the ball rolling. How about it, Nick? I don't know. You could always cash that cheque for me. I wouldn't let you down. Are you then? As long as we get our money. Oh, you will, I promise you. Hey, you do not know what this means to me. You can go through my wardrobe, you can have whatever you want. Oh. Right, well, when do you want us to start? Whatever you can. Fine, come in. Come over them. No time like the present, is there? Mm. All done. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff we've missed. Jerome's pushing us a bit, isn't he? Have you seen what he's claiming? You're a fine one to judge other people's models. I'm sorry, Jess. I didn't know how to tell you. I've told you everything. Things I wouldn't dare tell anybody else. I didn't want you to think badly of me. How long did it go on? What? The affair. Oh. Uh, hang on. Well, to be absolutely honest, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, your daughter was born in 1961, so it must have started at least nine months before that. Well, does it matter? Yes, it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't ask you, so just give me a straight answer. Look, all this arguing is not going to get us anywhere, is it? I mean, if I could change the past, I would do, wouldn't I? And what about the future? I'm sick of playing guessing games. Well, what's that supposed to mean? You don't talk to me. You haven't even told me whether or not you're going to meet up with her. Oh. Helen, who do you think? Oh. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, you'd better make up your mind, and soon. I will. Why are you going to hide it away like that photograph of their mother? I've told you. It, it, was, it was a keepsake from somebody I was used to be in love with. It was, it was just like you when you were in love with Tommy. Don't you dare compare Tommy and me with you and that woman. A, when I fell in love with Tommy Mac, I wasn't married. And B, I hadn't carried his photo around in my pocket for the last 40 years. I wasn't carrying the photo around. I just happened to come across it in the garage. Mm, yeah, well, it was well hidden. I had no chance of finding it. So what do you want me to do? Walk away? Turn me back on my daughter once again, just to make you happy. Well, tell me what to do. Tell me. I love you, Jess, and I don't want to lose you, but are you saying that you want me to pretend that Helen doesn't exist just to make you happy? Fine, fine, if that's what you want. Just tell me, it's up to you. 
All I'm saying is, you can't expect us to trail across town on our own, which is why I booked a taxi, so for the first week she'd get dropped off outside the door. And what about the week after that, and the week after that? What about it? Well, she's going to have to get two buses on her own. I mean, she's ten years of age. I do know how old my own daughter is. And doesn't that worry you? Well, she's got a good head on her shoulders. She'll be fine. Like you, Kay. Hang on. Just remind me, has Louise's welfare got anything to do with you? It had this morning when you abandoned her. <sighs> abandoned her? What are you on about? I had it sorted. She was upset. Oh, so you thought you'd step in like the fairy godmother, like you always do, and make me out to be the big baddie who couldn't care less? Don't be taking your guilt out on me. You don't know how hard it is. I know there's a young girl crying out for a mother. Don't you make out. I'm not a good mum. Don't you dare make out. I'm not a good mum. All she bothers about is keeping up appearances. You don't care about Louise. <gasps> I love the bones of that kid. You wear her like a badge. Skiing, private school, it's all just for show. She's in that school because I wanted to be someone, get an education, instead of ending up on the scrap heap like you and me. Then try spending a bit of time with her. You said a lying on the couch all day blitzed out your brains. You're out of order. Just because you've got nothing else in your life. I just care about what happens to Louise. Yeah, well, it's none of your business. She's staying in that school if it kills me. And I don't care what I have to do. Unfair, aren't I? What about? I'll get round me dad, then he'll get round me mum. And how are you gonna do that? I'll go make tea, shall I? Give you a bit of a break. I think you need something with a bit of welly, Steve. Something to attract the bears with. Just be fed up him. Once you've graduated, you'll be able to get a boss job. Let's work in the sky. Do you fancy a quickie? Brookside is back tomorrow at 8.30. Next on four, location, location, location is house hunting in the seaside town of South End. Then. You said we were arguing. I heard you. Last night. I just don't like the idea of you going to school on your own, that's all. But Mum's got to go to work. I know. And so have you. You don't want to be late again. I'll tell you what. I'll put you in the taxi, make sure everything's OK. And then I'll be able to get off early this afternoon and come and pick you up. How's that? Cool. Come on, then. Let's go. Bev said as soon as she's got the bar back on its feet again, I can have my old job back. That'll help. Yeah, no, there's a little catch down the side there. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> when, when will this happen, did you say? Oh, sooner rather than later, I hope. Hey, hey, well, hey look at that. It baffled me less than your washing machine. But I got there in the end. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Come on, Princess. Let's get you in your carriage. Go on. Come on, I'll strap you in. <laughs> well, your mum gets ready. Oh, there you go. Ah. Do you want anything while we're out, Jess? Sorry? Do you want anything from the shops? Oh, no, thanks, love. There you go. How about that? Ow! Mm. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I just caught my finger. What have you watched about you for this, haven't you? <laughs> Takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah. Well, thanks anyway, Ray. It's I better pleasure. be going. See you both later. Bye, love. Let's help you out. No, I'm all right. You don't mind the step, then. Go on. Here you go. Oh. I'm being unfair, aren't I? What about? About Helen, your daughter. I lay awake for hours last night trying to put myself in your position. And I know that if I had a daughter out there, I'd want to get to know her. You mean if I arranged to meet her? You wouldn't mind? No. Thanks, Jess.
Did you ask your mum about the holiday? No. What holiday? None of your business. What was going on there? Nothing. Hey, so are you two going on holiday? There's a gang of us going. Where's it? Don't tell him. Next thing you know, he'll be coming with us. It's not my fault, you have to sit here, you know. Yeah, well, I'm sick of you being under my feet all the time, so shut up. Okay? Oh, he's dying to know. Couldn't care less. Good. Anyway, the further away, the better. Are you happy far enough for you? Honest? Yeah, honest. You've got no chance. Wanna bet? I don't think was nut. I know how to get round my dad. After what happened last year? Don't think so. I'll get round my dad, then he'll get round me. I know you're gonna do that. You'll see. Do you want me to pass this beauty course or not? I have only just stopped itching from the last time you practised on me. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. What? She waxed bikini line, didn't she? That was supposed to be private. I had to tell you, I had your hands on your kecks for a week. Which is why you're not practising on me again. This won't make you itch. It's just nail extensions. I don't want my nails extending. It'll only take an hour. I haven't got an hour. I've got to go to the car auctions with Steve. I'll tell you what. Why don't you practise on here? Hmm. Do you fancy it, Nick? Oh, I've got to go as well, Em. I've got a meeting with you at three o'clock today. <laughs> oh, please. I know what I'm doing. They told me this morning. I just need a bit of hands-on experience. Em, it's a really important meeting. So is this important? I've got to convince them that two years' work has gone up in smoke and then begging for an essay extension. Well, I tell you what, why don't you go, get the extension for your essay, and then come back and I'll do your set of nail extensions? I was going to go to the library after that. Well, what about later on tonight? OK. <laughs> Tarnit. Oh, yeah, nice one. I owe you one. I'll tell you what, do you want to live with me and Steve? No, you're not right. I'll make me own way. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Mm. Have you rung Helen yet? Uh, uh, no. Why not? Uh, well, uh, I, I was a bit nervous. Oh, Ray, you've just got to get over this. Look, ring her up now and arrange a time and a place to meet. You and I have got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you're right. You have got her number, have you? Yeah. Now, I think the best thing to do would be to invite her over for a meal. That way, I can cook something special for all of us. What? Are you planning on being there? I'll be there to support you, yeah. Well, well don't you think you'll, uh, Will you feel a bit awkward? I think we'll all feel a bit awkward. But we'll just have to get through that if we're going to get to know each other. Oh. I don't like using Mike and Rachel's phone without asking. Pay for the call, then. But I don't think we should invite people around here for a meal, you know, without, without checking with them first. It's, it's taking them for granted. OK. Suit yourself. But as soon as Rachel gets back from the shops, we'll ask her if it's OK. If you are going out across the town tonight, then give us a shout-out. Hey, love. Hmm. How's your day? All right. Wow. That good, eh? I want to get changed. Is he OK? I think so, yeah. Not all with a melted cloth. Not while I'm there to look after him. How was your day, Dal? All right. Ask me about my day. Go on, then. How was it? Bert's been taken that bad that he's not coming back to work. Oh. So you are now looking at the acting senior caretaker. Does that mean more money? It does, yeah. Nice one, Dad. Congratulations. I'll go and make the tea, shall I? Give you a bit of a break. What? I don't mind. Go on, then, if you want. Well, I'll go and see what we've got in. I mean, you can have a lie down, Smith. What's you up to? All right, Snowy. OK, Steve. Is there anyone here you don't know? <laughs> so what are we actually looking for, anyway? A bargain. I don't know. I think you need something with a bit of welly, Steve. <laughs> something to attract the birds with. Oh, like an Audi TT. I've always fancied the soft top myself. Maybe even a Beamer. Something like that. Something sweet. Hey, I'm good. Well, Manny, shall I do? Just me, you and your mum. Nisha's working till late. I'll leave some in the pan for her. There's a big meeting going on about the walking, combining with a proper medical centre. Both a bit worried about it, to tell you the truth. I mean, we like things the way they are, but... Sometimes things change and nothing you can do about it, is there? It's a bit like you having to change schools, really. No, it's not. Well, me and Nisha are going to have to get used to all sorts of new doctors. And it's worrying for both of us. I mean, will we get on with them? Will they get on with us? Will we have to learn lots of different things? It's horrible when things change all of a sudden. But you get used to it in the end. And sometimes it even turns out for the best. 
I'm just missing my old friends. That's all. You're making new friends. I like my old friends, and I can't even text them anymore because I've got no credit left on my phone. Mum says she'd buy me a new card for it, but she keeps forgetting. I tell you what, when your mum comes back in, I'll make you go straight back down to the garage and buy you a phone card. How's that? Will you? She's not getting a tea until you get your card. Roma, call on for it. That's the end plate. On this video on the relay. Come on, yeah. There you go. Okay, Steve. Thanks, Ron. Thanks. What's going on? I just bought myself a set of wheels. Yeah, but you didn't bid for anything. I know. It's snowy, did. Who was that snowy guy, anyway? I used to work with him. Hold me a favour. And you let him do the bidding for you? Yeah. Ah, so which one did you get? The GTI? Ah, uh, you'll see. How much did you pay for it? 620. 620 quid. Oh, I've got handed to you, Steve. That is cheap. That is well cheap, well in. Here it is. You've been robbed. <laughs> Decided to put in cameras now. In school? <sighs> Close circuit telly. It's gonna be like Big Brother. Well, if it stops the bullying, I'm all for it. I think it's for security mainly. Be the car park, the reception areas, all the entrances, on the boiler house. The boiler house? Smoker's corner. Do you know, I think that was the last straw for Bert. The boiler house is where he did all his skiving. Talking of skiving, do you fancy a quickie? Oh, is this instead of, or as well as, an early night? Oh, as well as. What about the kids? Well, Anne's doing his homework. Adele's making the tea. Steve's out. Adele's only downstairs, and Anne's in his room. So? Well, you know what they're like. They'll come bursting through that door any minute. to you all of a sudden? Nothing. Yet. Mm. Ignore it. I'll tell her sort it out. Sort it out. Oh, just open the front door. It's freezing outside. And just do it, will you? I'm on the toilet. <laughs> Don't move. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Cheers, Reddy. <sighs> Can we make do with just an early night? Sure. You need a breaker's license to buy right off, right? It's supposed to be used for spare parts, but Snowy owed me a favour. So he let you have that shed for six hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah. He's laughing at you. I know what I'm doing. Look, he saw you coming. If there was any chance of getting that shed back on the road, the insurance company wouldn't have written it off in the first place. It's not worth their while to get it fixed. Yeah, and it's not worth your while, is it? I've got a mate who can do the bodywork for a couple of hundred. Ooh, big hook. And I'll do the engine myself. I'll have to put in the hours, like. Yeah, but you won't be able to get insured on it or nothing. So? It'll be illegal. Robin lorries full of ale's illegal. Yeah, but that's worth the risk, though, isn't it? And this will be worth it. A car like that, of that age, will be worth about eight grand. I can have it back on the road for 800. Have you done this before? No. Maybe we should think about it. We should. Mm. Go into business. Mobile mechanic. That's my business. Yeah, but if this snowy fella's game, it's a one-off. A means to an end. That's all. No, if we could sell them and make seven grand a time, we'd get caught. And I don't want to sell it. I want a van that I can use for work. I want to get myself on my feet. As long as I don't do anything stupid like trying to sell it or going through a speed camera, I'll be all right. 
Well, my mum be home for tea. She's probably that busy, it slipped her mind. She used to do this to Richard all the time. I didn't think he minded, but I suppose he must have. That's why we're here. Your mum told me she came here to look after me. She's not very good at looking after people. Are you OK? Yeah. That was lovely, Auntie Katie. Thanks. I know. Why don't we go down the garage and get some chocolate? And while we're there, we can get your phone card. Are you sure? Yeah. Come on. There you go. <sighs> Is that too hard? No, it's lovely. Good. I'll do your massage in a minute after they've soaked, and then I'll be able to apply your tips. Right. And then you'll be able to claw the back out of your room when I get home from work. <laughs> Is that scally husband of yours, then? <laughs> He's in the bath. And, eh, I'd rather have a scally husband than a two-time and bingo call him boyfriend. What do you think about your course? He's all for it, you know. Oh. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad it's only one day a week. It's a fun sometimes. <laughs> they were going on about the anatomy of Anne today, which... You need to know to pass the course, but you'll never use in the job. I really like my course. Oh. Oh, how did you get on with your tutor? Did he give you the extension for your essay? Yeah. You don't seem too happy about it. Oh, he was very understanding and all that, but I've still got to go and write the thing again. I had to start on it before in the library. It must be easier, though, the second time round, if you've already done the work. Easier, yeah, but pointless. I don't know what you mean. And when you're writing an essay, you're learning things as you go along, making your mind up, you're forming an opinion. When you've got to write the same essay again, you don't learn anything new. So, I'm only actually doing it to prove to me tutor that I've done it. What's the point in that? I mean, what's more important, learning something or proving to someone that you've learned it? Proving to someone that you've learned it? Otherwise, he won't give you your job. I'm just a bit fed up, him. I feel like I'm banging my head against a brick wall. I've been studying for <laughs> nearly three years now. All I've got to show for it. It's one set of clothes and a nine grand debt. Yeah, but once you've graduated, you'll be able to get a boss job and you'll pay that off in no time. And everyone knows students only need one set of clothes. I'm starting to think. I mean, all my notes and my textbooks went up in that fire. That maybe it was some kind of sign. Yeah, well... At least your home didn't go up, eh? Yeah. Notes and textbooks can be replaced, can't they? <laughs> You that have come up to read. Dad? What? Before you get into your book, can I have a quick word? I can't it wait. Well, it'll only take a minute. What do you want? I just want to remind you it's Valentine's Day next week. So? Have you planned anything for me, Mum? I might have. Well, I was thinking, if me and Steve club together, we could book you and me Mum into a hotel for the night. I mean, she deserves a bit of a treat, doesn't she? What are you two whispering about? Nothing. What do you reckon? I mean, it'd be dead romantic. And sometimes it really does you good to get away for a break, doesn't it? Yeah, you two can't afford that. Yeah, but if Steve was up for it as well... <sighs> yeah, right, look, we'll talk about it tomorrow, OK? OK. <sighs> Night, Adele. Night. Night, Mum. Night, love. What did she want? I don't know. She's after something, though. <laughs> Do you want me to ask her? Well, don't you think it's a bit hard-faced? There's no harm in asking. I'll explain that we'll do it whenever's convenient for her and Mike. The problem with those doctors' use books is they never make her sleepy. She's jumping up and down now with a pillowcase on her head, pretending to be the cat in the hat. Oh. <laughs> Rachel, um, Ray and I were wondering, would it be right if we had a friend round sometime this week? To stay? Oh, no, 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 just for something to eat. I'd do the cooking. We wouldn't want to get in the way of you and Mike. If, if it's inconvenient, we can do it some other time. Only, if there's a time when you're both going to be out, I wouldn't want to upset your routine or anything. Oh, I was going to take Beth for a swim on Friday afternoon. Oh, right. Perhaps we could have her around for lunch, then. Mike will be in bed. Ah, better not, then, eh? Well, I'm sure it won't be a problem, though. As long as you don't start shouting and screaming. 
Right, that's settled then. Ray, why don't you go and ring Helen, see if she can make it? Me and Jay should be living in some big student house off Larklean. Or better still, we should be living in a different part of the country. Getting to know a different city, different people. We'd never see each other. I don't know what I mean is um, we should be broadening our horizons, getting a bit of independence. I'm still living in the same house I was before I even went to university. No, you're not. Yeah, well, I would be if it hadn't been down. It took a fire to get me out of there. Do you know all the students, um, they go around the world. Australia, Thailand, India, South America. I've gone to Jimmy Corkills. I only managed to do that because of an accident with a tea light. As soon as that bungalow's rebuilt, I'll be straight back over there living with me now. Do you know why I am? I can't afford anything else. I'm going nowhere. You are. You're going to get your qualifications first, and then you're going to go somewhere. It just takes time, that's all. Now, I'm starting to think going to university was just one big mistake. Nicky, no, you know how proud my dad was when you got in. He was made up. Yeah, that's what's been keeping me going this long. It's not fair, though. Why should I keep putting myself through this? I'm just getting myself deeper and deeper into debt for a man who isn't even here anymore. If my dad was still alive, I'd just go to him and say, Dad, I can't act this anymore. Because the stupid sod when I've got himself killed, I can't, can I? So I'm just trapped. <laughs> <laughs> See you, you know. I fancy you too. You don't think I just want you in a movie lighting, do you? No. Honestly. Ty, I'm all worked up here. I don't give a toss why you want me. Can we just get on with it? Do you want some hot chocolate? No, thanks, we don't. Well, I've made you some now. I'll bring it in, shall I? You can leave it if you don't want it. All oh, right, thanks, love. That's really nice of you. No problem. Any toothpaste in the ensuite? Help yourself. Why don't you invite all your friends around at the same time? Oh, be a minute. Oh, I love that I don't want it. I didn't make it for you. Well, if you don't want it. Anthony, what are you still doing? Awake school in the morning? I can't sleep. Hey, but I'll have chocolate might do. Take mine. But can you all get out? I'm trying to read here. What are you reading that for, Mum? Why not? Is this a bad time? Yes. So can you all get out and give us a bit of privacy? Come on, you two. Let's leave them to their reading. <laughs> about what we were talking about before. I've spoken to Steve. Del, can't you take a hint? He's up for it. And so is he. Come on, let's get out of here. What do you mean? He's... I'm sorry. I didn't realise. What's going on? I'm sorry. Can you get out? And don't come back. I don't hear another peep out of you tonight. Hey, and same goes for you two and all. What did she say? Can she make it? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no backing out now. No. Nope. So, lunchtime Friday, I finally get to meet your daughter. I'm sure we'll find lots to talk about. I'm sorry about before then. Um. It's okay. It's probably just a late shock after the fire. You'll be all right in the morning. I don't think so, you know. You will. You'll get a good night's sleep and it'll be right as rain. What would have changed in the morning? Well, you'll have a brand new set of nails for a start. I meant what I said before, you know. I'm fed up. I can't hack it anymore. Do you know what? I was thinking exactly the same this morning. Sat listening to that dozy cow going on about the structure of the hand. But you get through it, don't you? And look at the results. It's worth it in the end, isn't it? I don't know. Nick, if I wouldn't have gone to college this morning, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Imagine what you'll be able to do after three years at uni. Except it's easier for you, cos you like your course. Yeah, my course is great, but it's me life that I'm sick of. OK. The bungalow burning down was bad luck. Um, if that fire proves anything. If it happens to me dad and Jason proves anything. It's any day can be your last. 
And you never know, one day you're here, the next you're gone. So why am I wasting my time at university? Just get myself deeper and deeper into debt. You're not thinking of dropping out, are you? Yeah. Is up to her neck in it, and she still doesn't feel half as sorry for herself as you. Let's have a look at these Glendors then, shall we? They've had another win on the bingo. Why else would the lady from the payout be there? You knew you had a granddaughter and you didn't tell me. So I'm gonna take you, I am. Adele! I see I'm not the only one who's been stripping. Brookie's back tomorrow at 8:30. Next on four, three lads on a children's ward and the effect of their conditions on their families, the trust, in a few minutes. He's gone bonkers and all this sniffing stuff. The credit must have run out. She can't even afford a mobile phone. Whoa, Jimmy was right. This one does smell of lemons. Tim. And this is the one that they put in the pizza. Tim. What? Look, I don't know what all the fuss is about. Loads of people drop out of uni because the course is too hard or they hate the work or, oh, I miss me mum. Or the house burns down. All the hard graft goes up in flames. They hate crying pop. Oh, Nikki owes over a grand in tuition fees alone. She's trying to support herself at some minty job, and she's still no better off. Yeah, well, she needs a break. Oh, Tim, she's going to end up with nothing, the same debt and no degree. It's only a bit of paper. That's going to get her a whole better job, a whole better future. What's with the face? Nothing. It's just that everyone's planning ahead, except me. Steve's setting himself up for life with this van he's bought. You know what? You should have seen him in the auction. His boss. It was nothing he didn't know about cars. Probably because he's a mechanic. No, it's not just that side. It's known his way around the legal stuff as well. Well, I only use his business as a fun with you. No, she's definitely going straight with it. It's a shame, because all I know is my mate who works in the sunbed shop. It makes a pittance. Yet the two fellas who own it, their girlfriends, are dripping in gold. Yeah, well, I don't own a sunbed shop, do I? Or a van. The cash that we made from the ale, it's gonna last forever. You want to come your blessings? Our oh, Nikki is up to her neck in it, and she still doesn't feel half as sorry for herself as you. All the time she's helped me out when I've been in trouble, and I can't do a thing for her. What were you thinking of? Putting a red tea towel in with me wash? I thought nowadays that stuff was, was colour fast. All I've got left are these are Bridget's. Which one? Either. That's no help. Well, you're not meeting the Queen. On safari in Manor Park, or frumpy old pensioner. I'm not surprised she lent them. Save her a trip to the charity shop. Look, if you're getting yourself into such a tizzy, why did you badger me to phone Helen? For you! Oh. Well, I'm, I'm bowled over just thinking about me like that, but, uh, look, we can... we can still cancel. No. It's just that I'd feel so much better if we could meet on home turf. Well, why don't we wait and, and see her back in our own home? We can't put it off now. Oh, there's more creases in this than when I started. I wanted to look me best. You've seen each other plenty of times, plenty of times at the bingo. As a cashier, not as your daughter, as, as my stepdaughter. There's always someone worse off than yourself, what? isn't there? Well, my sister's well better off now. So oh. she should be. Well, I've come round to say thanks for that. Yeah, well, I did it for you, not her. You know, she's dead grateful. Katie. Hello, sweetie, bye. It went against my better judgments, but like you said, when kids are involved, you can't let them suffer, can you? How is Louise? Oh, she's been unsettled with a new school. Feeling like that a bit myself, to be honest. Well, maybe you stop them then. Go in, mate. Come in. Thanks, Bill. 
All right, Rach. Me and Beth are going swimming, remember? And they've got Helen coming round. Who is she? Don't know. Never thought to ask. Maybe she's a marriage guidance counsellor. Do you know what? I would never have believed two oldies could kick off like that. Yeah, well, you don't know what goes on behind other people's closed doors, do you? Until they come and live with you. But they seem fine now. Ray had his arm around Jesse earlier. Oh, maybe she's a sex therapist. Give her cash. <laughs> Go on, Kate. Give her cash. Mike! Oh, sorry. Um, is it right if you use the bathroom? I know I've got to do my face, and that mirror's got good light. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll be leaving you to it today, Jesse, but might need to nap, so... Don't worry. We're going to have a brass band playing. How long do you think they'll be staying? Well, I'll have to go before my dad gets out. I'm not being funny, but they're getting on my nerves. I mean, I like them, but I can't even watch them eat. And I'm glad we could help them out and everything, but... Oh, no. What? You'll think I'm tight. Oh, go on. Well, an extra 50 quid a week wouldn't go amiss, would it, if we charged them rent? How could the evil landlady? Yeah, but our hearing's coming up soon. Rachel, we don't want the whole world to know that we're in debt. And we can't have our Jackie lending the money and then me taking it off them. And besides, the me dad's mates and are no hassle, are they? <sighs> What's up with you, Facey? Eh? You're tripping over yourself trying to please us yesterday. You wouldn't understand. Hello, blue eyes. <laughs> I'd get contact myself, honey. These give me hands something to do. Hiya, then. Hiya, sweetheart. Where's our Steve? With well, his friend Snow, we're checking over this new van he's just bought. Hey, do you reckon he's got this new van because he's living at home? No. Maybe you and me dad could get a van. At least then I wouldn't feel bad getting in your way, trying to please you. Medal of the month. Mum. Seeing it's your day off, do you fancy coming to bingo with me? Day off? This house doesn't clean itself, you know. Dell! What do you think? They don't call them advanced studies for nothing, you know. So I can't persuade you, then. <sighs> the dust on that telly saw the Queen's speech. Well, I'll give Jess a knock. Goodness knows she could do with cheering up. She's living like a gypsy at the moment. <gasps> do you think I've done enough? Oh, yeah, yeah, for the whole close. Oh, these shoes feel like boots. I feel like Coco the Clown. You think you feel awkward? Oh, she's punctual anyway. I know where she gets that from. Well, aren't you going to get that? I don't want any part of this. This is all your idea. <sighs> Hello, Jessie. Come in, Helen. Oh, are they fussy about the carpet? Should I take mine off? Oh, no. No, no, there's no need. Thanks for this. Oh, it's no bother. Pleasure. Do sit down. Thanks. Just seeing the state of your house. Must have been terrifying. Were you in hospital long? Um, oh, they just kept us in overnight, thankfully. How long will it take to rebuild? Your guess is as good as mine. It's uh, waiting on the paperwork that's a uh, frustrating bit. That and feeling like a charity case. But I've done a few pieces, you know, protecting you from the weather and that. He's not happy unless he's got a drill in his hand. Oh, a handyman, eh? I must get you to come round and check my smoke alarm. Oh, prevention's better than cure. Oh, that's what my mum used to take, well, June. After the event, of course. She nearly burnt our house down when I was about three. Fell asleep with a ciggy on the go on a horsehair settee. It was only smoke damage in the end. Well, we all used to smoke in those days, didn't we? I mean, it was a done thing, wasn't it? We all used to think it, uh, <laughs> it, it gave us sex appeal. <laughs> I've always thought it was a dirty habit. Very wise. My mum used to say, if you want to catch a man, ask him for a light. When he's lit the match, hold his hand in both of yours and stare straight into his eyes. <laughs> Did my real mum used to smoke? I can't remember whether Auntie Sylvia... Are you expecting someone? No. Hello. Is, is Jessie in? Uh, she's through here, but... Uh... Oh, you look nice, Jess. Uh, I'll let it out for you when I have a bit of time. Thank you. Oh, special occasion. Haven't had lunch yet myself. Hello. Hi. I'm Bridget, Jess's friend. I'm Helen. Uh, Helen's just popped round. Uh, just popped round for lunch. So you don't fancy coming to the bingo with me? Oh, afraid I can't today. Well, I suppose you must be up to your neck in chores after the fire. Oh, if there's anything I can do... Oh, no, no, we're fine, thanks, actually. <laughs> Look, you'd better get a move on if you want to catch the early session. Oh, I can go any day. I was just looking for a bit of company, really. Oh, I'm sorry, lad. Have we woken you up? 
Um, no, no, I was just, I was gasping for a cup of... Oh. This is Mike. He, he's very kindly lent us his home. Well, it's, it's me dad's. But I'm paying you in kind, aren't I, lad? Hey, I mean, I know they're only roll ends and that, but they've covered up a lot of the damage. Oh, flock. Fancy. Who'd have thought? You wait, I bet they'll be in all the trendy mags next year. You're not finding it too cramped, Oak? Oh, no, no, as a matter of fact, uh, Mike's dad's, um... Well, he's, uh, he's away. I'll just stick the kettle on for us. Oh, that would be lovely. So why are you at sixes and sevens? I hate my job. Oh, everyone goes through them phases. The walking centre's gonna have a GP practice and all. So you can either walk in and see a nurse for minor illnesses and stuff, or see a doctor by appointment. So how does that leave you? Better off, weigh yourself, who cares? We'll have a pharmacy on site. Oh, that would have saved me all of ten minutes going the chemist last time. Mind you, I could do without waiting there. You end up with more leggies than you went in with sitting in that place. Welcome to my world. Well, your job won't change, will it? I still need a receptionist. I've hardly got clear on records, all the sickies I've had since Clint. And I'm on a written warning as it is. What, since when? Since I told your dad to wait in the queue and he reckons I refused some treatment. Yeah, well, that's all in the past now, isn't it? And anyway, if it's a change of scene you need, Max will be looking for more waiting on staff for the shelf. It's gonna be well chock with Valentine's coming up. Great. Receptionist to waitress and saving a load of moony eyed couples, just what I need. Jack, I'm just fed up of doing the same thing day in, day out. Nothing to look forward to. No one special to come home to. This time last year, I never would have thought I'd still be stuck behind that minty desk wearing this uniform. It's meant to be a means to an end. Save up and get off with Clint. I could be living right now. Meeting all sorts, snuggling up at night. He's even had a baby by now. He wants a kid, you know. Picnics on the beach. What you got there, mate? <laughs> oh, they're our photos from our skiing holiday. Harry and Emma's attempt at a snowman. I don't mean to be rude, Bridge. Honestly, I don't. But we've got a few things to sort out. You know how it is. All right, well, sorry for barging in. But it was nice meeting you. You too. Uh, I know where I've seen you before. You work at the bingo, don't you? That's right. The girl they love the most. I hand the winnings out. No wonder I didn't recognise you straight off. I don't get many dealings with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are you doing here? Getting fat by the looks of things. A business lunch? Oh, purely social. Do you mind if I take another? Dig in. Um, perhaps I'll see you tomorrow, eh, Bridge? No, I'll, um, I'll, I'll see myself out. Uh, phone me if you need me for anything. Will do, Bridge. Over the river cry. Oh, she calls that advanced studies. You're back early. I didn't go. Why? What's up? Ray and Jesse. They've had another win on the bingo. A huge one. They? They were acting very suspiciously. Why else would the lady from the payout be there with a big brown envelope? So what do your granddaughters do, Jessie? Oh, they're gorgeous. Chalk and cheese, mind you. One's at uni. I thought I was at home then. I used to have photos of them on the windowsill. It must be tough, using all the personal stuff you can't replace. Yeah, we have to rely on our memories now. Wish I could say the same. Let me get you a refill. Oh, that'd be lovely. Excuse me. What's this? It's that photo I showed you. It's Stephanie, my daughter. Uh, well, what, what photo? You know, the one I showed you at the pub, but I had a copy made and I thought, okay, you like might to keep it. Ta. Let's have a look at Ray's granddaughter then, shall we? Excuse me. He's told you about her then. She's a right little tomboy. Oh. oh, he was full of it after he met you. You were made off, weren't you, Ray? Yeah, I, I was gobsmacked. 
sorry I couldn't come and meet you as well. But what day was it again? Um, last Tuesday. Oh, that's right. Only I was busy with the insurers about the fire. We can have lots of uh, get-togethers, can't we? I mean, Scylla Black would be made up with our story, wouldn't she? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought of trying to find your real mum? Oh, finding you's a big enough step for now. Um, if it's not too soon, maybe you'd both like to meet Steph. Uh, what, what do you think, Jess? Oh, I'll go along with anything you say. She had the cheque on her lap. Really? Well, in an envelope. But you actually saw it. It was all very cloak and dagger. Isn't that proof enough? Are you sure? I mean, it's not like you not to get the full set of facts. Chance would be a fine thing. They couldn't get me out of there quick enough. If that woman had to go round there in secret to protect confidentiality, you know, like winning the lottery, we could be talking hundreds of thousands of pounds here, half of which is rightfully mine. Do you mean I'm actually going to get an inheritance? <laughs> if it's anything like last time, I'll be lucky to get a bean. And Jessie's wearing my clothes as well. The things I do for that woman. Innocent till proven guilty. They had the tea service out. Hey, we don't get to see half as much of Auntie Katie as we'd like to, do we? Do you know what? It's not until you've got kids you realise how unimportant you are. Do you know, as soon as we heard about the fire next door, my first reaction was to go and check up on these two. Rachel said the same about Beth. It's just like a gut reaction. I wouldn't know, would I? <laughs> I'm making out this mum log's fantastic, but there's a downside too, you know. I mean, if I didn't have Rachel next door helping out every now and then, I'd be going bananas. Why didn't you never ask me to babysit? Oh, do you know what? I never really thought. Well, you thought I'd be too busy. No, Rachel's just... A moment, she knows all about it. Oh, Katie, do you know what? I never thought that for one second. Hey, if you want to get involved... I'm going to have to get into work. I'm on the two till ten shift. Oh, you've got ages yet, and I haven't even made you a bussy. Go on, stay for a bit longer. I get lonely and all, you know, not having any adults around me. Cheddar and Basil. Is that Nicky phones? Nope. What's this? Your Nicky's future. A grand. What? It's the money that we got from lifting the ale. I was stupid to think that's all we've got. And anyway, there's a whole old Larry bank up here. But I thought you were worried it weren't gonna last. Yeah, well, you made me think this morning. This line of work that I'm in, it's all about confidence. If you got the nerve, you get the payoff. So I've got to be sure that the big time is just around the corner. And then eventually, a grand will seem like a drop in the ocean when we're sitting by our pool. On the weather. Our heated pool. <laughs> Nicky's gonna be beside herself. I can't believe you do this for her. Hey, I've done it for you. I can't have you moaning at me every time you're worried about your sister. This is the first time ever that I've been able to do anything like this for her. So when can we give it to her? Ah, loan it. One step at a time, eh? But she can pay me back whenever she wants. Or I can. Oh, in instalments, eh? Yeah, and here's your first. Silly, really, but I was a bit nervous this morning. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's gone rather well, hasn't it? Any idea how the fire started? Tea lights. One of them bent through the top of the telly. I had this uh, big romantic evening planned, you see, and... Oh, at least his heart's in the right place. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry it turned into such a disaster, but... Well, it's nice to know that I've got a dad with such honourable intentions. Anyway, bye. Bye! Oh, you're an angel, Jess. For a moment there, I thought... Inside. Adele! Adele, I'm stripping the beds! Adele! I see I'm not the only one who's been stripping. Lynn, get lost! This is my room! I did shout! Lunch now. What do you fancy? <sighs> Slaving over a hot CD, was she? I've just been in our Anthony's room. Where's the Blessed Virgin Mary? And his wardrobe. And the pictures? Did Marty take them down? No, Anthony did. Why? He just decided to. Coerced, was he? Mum. Don't think I don't know he's being pushed into football and all sorts of rubbish he doesn't want to get involved with. 
He doesn't go to church anymore. When he comes to my place, all he wants to do is sit in his room and play that game you bought him for Christmas. Why has he started to lose his faith so suddenly? He hasn't lost it. He's just put it in a different place. He's hiding it like he's been made to feel ashamed of it. Maybe he's just leaving room in his life for other stuff. Like what? <sighs> he's nearly a teenager. I don't know. Girls. He hates girls. He gets bullied by them. He's gone through a tough time. Maybe he needs to clear his head a bit. You know, spring clean, blow away the cobwebs. He's going to need his faith more than ever to get him through this tough time. Our Anthony's become a shadow of the little boy I know. And he's not going to find the strength he needs from a football pitch. Do you realise how left out and stupid you made me feel? You knew you had a granddaughter and you didn't tell me. Well, you, you don't think Helen didn't have a past, do you? I mean, a woman that age, she's bound to have settled at some point. It's not the fact she's got a daughter, Ray. It's the fact you've got a granddaughter and you kept it from me. Oh. It's the secret meetings and the lies I can't handle. I was just trying to protect you. From what? The good old days? Jesse, can you keep it down, please? Oh, I'm sorry, lad, but... I don't care, just... You've reached the age of 68 and you discovered you've got a granddaughter. It's not some small detail you can forget to mention. You've known for a whole week and you didn't say anything. I was trying to come to terms with it myself. And how do you feel about it now? Um, well, I, I don't know. Oh, rubbish. Just tell me. Oh, I, I, I really don't. You're lying. It's just barefaced lies. No, I'm not. You've lied to me ever since you met me. I mean, why didn't you tell me you had a daughter? Well, I had to turn me back on it, didn't I? I mean, Rini closed it all down and I had to stop, well, had to stop uh, thinking about it. Well, you must feel something now. Why won't you talk to me, Ray? I mean, what is it? What else are you keeping from me? Uh, you name a date and I will happily palm these two off on you. If I'd known you were this keen, I'd be asking you every week. Well, Friday night's the best for me. That's perverse. You should be out large, innit? That's exactly what I don't want to be doing, Jack. Well, you can start on kids you now if you want. Two cartons of black currant juice in the fridge and one biscuit each to by the cooker. I don't know. Are you sure you're up for this? You know, I like to get value out of me staff. I want pay. How about a bottle of wine and a DVD of your choice? Do I want to take away and... I don't want your Sammy gagging in now. She'll take me out of house and home after trying to get a leg over me husband. Get off. But I'm in one well, leaf away. All right, so to deal then. Of course. See ya. Ta you know everything now. Do you know how to spot a good wife? I've had no kip at all. I'm the same man that you married. I married a decent, honest man. Well, I am, and I was. <laughs> and I ended up with a two-timing con man. Ray, Jesse, I've asked you to keep it down, haven't I? Beth's upset. That makes two of us. I feel sorry for your daughter and your granddaughter. Oh, please, Jess. You'd be stringing them along like you string me. strung nobody along. What can you do to make me trust you again? Ever? What do you want me to do? Rewrite history? I'm talking about the present! Please, do you think you could do this somewhere else? Oh, I wish I could, believe you me. I'd love to go back to the privacy of my own home. Back with the man I thought I knew. Why don't we just get you drunk instead? Pepe? Is this a bit? No, it's you. Thursday the 4th, Harry's dentist appointment. Friday the 5th, cold blood a killer released from jail. Hang on a minute. I want to know what Tim's got to do with the burglary in our house. <laughs> Nothing. What's this? What's it look like? That's on Wednesday at 8. Coming up, an apparition with wispy hair is haunting Craggy Island. It's Father Ted on 4.
wish I could, but Mum's appointed me to be your bodyguard, whether I like it or not. Are you two in for your tea tonight? Awesome. What are we having? Oh, don't you know what day it is? Tuesday. It's not just any old Tuesday. It's Pancake Tuesday. Great. Yeah, it's a big event in this house. Jackie's bringing our wills round, and I'm going to pass on the secret cork hill recipe to him. Have you passed that money to Nikki yet? I haven't had a chance to speak to her yet. Oh, I think she finds out she can sell at uni, thanks to us. Have you even been into work today? I wasn't in the mood. Can I have the ball back, please? No chance. <sighs> Come on, let's get you sober. Why don't we just get you drunk instead? I mean it. It's lots of black coffee and a shower for you. <sighs> It'll be for the best. Yeah, see ya. No. You think I'm just gonna let you win? <sighs> You're right, Jim. Our wills isn't coming. It's going to one of his mates from school. That's not fair. You're really looking forward to that. It's all right. He'll be better off spending a bit of time with his little mates. Getting to know them and that. We can still have pancakes here, can't we? Nah, forget it. Yeah, come on, it'd be a grin. Saves wasting all the stuff as well. Yeah, we can invite Nicky and Jerome round. Well, it's plenty to go around, isn't there? You don't know how to love. Hey, you can ask the neighbours. It's more like it. Hey, I'm sure your nan and Ray would be up for it. And the Murrays. I'm gonna see what I can round up. <laughs> Hiya. Good day. Okay. How did everything go at dinner time? I had to go to the shops with Laura. I asked you to sit with Anthony. Well, I needed to get something, OK? No, it isn't. You promised me. Who did you sit with in the canteen, love? On my own. Stop making a fuss. I was all right. I'm gonna get changed. Thanks, Adele. Well, I'm fed up of it all. And this house. Just wish I could get away. Well, you could always escape to that beach party in your bedroom. Dance around in your bikini. <laughs> for your information, I'll be going away for real soon. Oh, yes. Where to? You'll just have to wait and see. Still our daughter? What, are you gone home? What, are you having your wheels over for pancakes? Uh, yeah, something came up. Change of plan. So, I've decided. I'm throwing a pancake party. What do you think? A pancake party? Yeah. You's an invited. Do you good. You've been working too hard. Yeah, well, at least we've got this place looking half decent again. The stench of the pals is beginning to fade at last. Oh, you can't blame Lance for what went on. It was all Leanne and Christie's fault. Yeah, well, he didn't stop them, did he? So he's just as bad. He did his best to try and stop them. Well, he didn't try hard enough, Judas. You don't mean that. You and him were besties. Yeah, well, not anymore. Anyway, I've got my new A-team around me now. Hi. Hi. All right, you know. Hey, how's your tossing? You are. Pancake party at ours later on. You and Nicky are invited. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, Jimmy, couldn't give me a hand, could you? Moving these empty barrels in the stock room. Yeah, no problems. Should have got time? No, it's a time, yeah. Uh, you get off home as well, Nick. You've worked hard enough for today. Top. But do we have to go to Jimmy's tonight? I mean, it's been only night off in ages. I can't afford to go anyway. I'm skint. Well, we can go to pictures or something. Or me. So you're always treating me. Besides, I'd like to go to Jimmy's. It's free. Maybe a laugh. All right, then. But next week, we're going out. My treat. I was fed up being broke. Why are you working here for nothing, then? Why don't you get yourself another job? I feel really sorry for Bev. I want to help her get this place open again. And the way the way things are going, I might end up in here full-time. I don't reckon I have any choice. By the looks of it, I'm going to end up an ex-student and a full-time barmaid. I'm going to give her the money in this. Crack on affords them as a surprise to cheer her up. Well, she will accept the money, won't she? Of course. Well, she knows you haven't earned it for murder or something. Look, Tim, Arnie here is a born student. She needs this degree, otherwise there's no way she's going to make anything of her life without it. That's why it's so important to her. My dad would have been so proud of her. Hey, I love you. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, maybe if you knew I was helping Arnie, he's a graduate. Can't wait to see your face when she sees the money. <laughs> right, I better get up. Gotta make up the pancake batter. Hello there. Hi. You all right? Hey, Bev. Visitor for you? No, oh, it's you. I have to leave you too. See ya. Looks like you've been waiting out. I had no choice. Came back to find me business in ruins and me bar a pigsty, thanks to me so-called friends. I tried to stop Leon and that Christy money from making a mess of things, I swear. You were supposed to be in charge. Not according to our Leanne. She told me you'd left her in charge. And once that Christy got his feet under the table, there was nothing I could do. I tried to warn her that he was just using her, but she wouldn't listen. In the end, he convinced her that I was jealous of them. And she sacked me. Why didn't you try and get in touch with me? How could I? You'd swanned off on that cruise. Actually, I was in Brazil, trying to get myself out the mess I got into for you and Fred. You went to see him? Well, Leanne told me the immigration were after me. I thought I was a fugitive. I had no choice. I'm so sorry about all this. It's my fault. Yeah, well, if anyone's to blame, it's that evil cow of a sister of yours. Neither of us should have trusted her. I don't think she could help me. She was blinded by love. I don't care. I'll never forgive her for what she's done to this place. What about me? I knew you wouldn't betray me on purpose. So, be friends again? Suppose so. Come on, all of it. Right in. There's no need. There is in. <gasps> I've been through the sober enough routine enough times. I know how you feel. No, you don't. Come on in, Tim. Uh, all right. Hi, Di, okay. Hi. Listen, I've just called round to invite you to a party at ours. Pancake party. Hi, Aunt, okay. Oh, can we go, please? Yeah, okay, if you like. Great, well, call round when you're ready. And listen, bring your own pan. Because we're having a competition, okay? See you later. I'll go and tell Nan and Adele. Yes. <sighs> Sam, how's Josh? Oh, I don't think he ever got over Dave doing one. And as for me and Fred getting married, <laughs> we got on with him well enough, but uh, he was hardly ideal stepfather material. Mm, don't suppose you doing a moonlight flit helped either. You must have missed loads of schooling. No, I put him into a really good school, but by the time he got settled properly, I'd had enough of life on the run. And you thought you'd come home and face the music? Yeah, but when I handed myself into the authorities, they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. I tell you, that Leanne won't stitch me up good and proper. Oh, um, <clears throat> I was Fred. Well. He felt terrible for getting me into so much trouble, and, um, well, he's really sorry he's hurt you. Yeah, well, it's too late for all that. As far as I'm concerned, we're history. Hey, guess what I found when I was cleaning up behind the bar? Photos from our trip to Sowie. Oh, the South Port Shanna. Hey, you've got to admit, we just have a hoot. Oh, we look so happy. Yeah, how will we to know it all ended in tears and the beautiful bar and rooms? Hello. Guests have arrived. Hey, Dave. Okay. You going frying pan with you, son? Good lad, I'll let you go first. I'm just making up my special pancake mix. No packet stuff here, all homemade to an old family recipe. I'm very glad to hear it. Here you go. Can I do anything for you? Oh, thanks, son. No, no, I'm all prepared. Cheers. Steve's stuck on a job. He'll get her if he can. Nice one. I knocked over at Bay and Jesse, but they didn't fancy it. I thought they could have done with a bit of cheer, enough. Imagine losing everything like that. Yeah, well, hopefully the insurance will pay up, but you know what they're like. Do anything to avoid coughing up, won't they? Not that you need talent, but that you went through. It's still no joy. <laughs> what are you on about, Jimmy? No bad, Louis. But I cock up. How does he know we tried to bump up the claim? Ignore him. Just cos he's dodgy, he thinks everyone's at it. Well, I just don't want people thinking we're dishonest, that's all. What's up? Jimmy's just put his size nines in and about the break-in. Diane knows what happened? No. We better make sure she doesn't or my life isn't going to be worth living. To it for pancakes and a few drinks. Do you fancy it? Yeah, yeah, a few do. Should be a laugh, like this place used to be. And will be again. You'll get your regulars back, you will. As soon as the air you've reopened. I hope so. Do you know what? I never knew how much this place meant to me till I got out that cab and saw the state it was in. 
To be honest with you, I only bought it to rub on a Jackie's nose, isn't it? Show my mint that I was. It's just a play thing, but then I got attached. Do you know what? I've had some of the happiest nights of my life in this bar, and some of the saddest. Mm. Don't know what I'd do if I lost it. How about me number one barman coming back? Me? Oh, I know. You always wear the customer's fave. I don't know if I should. I I've got a new job. <sighs> Trainee maitre d' in a restaurant off Penny Lane. Oh, what's that posh? Yeah, but you belong here with me. That's just it. I don't know if I do anymore. Hi, Jim. Hello, kids. Get yourselves a drink before we start. Uh, we haven't brought a bottle or anything. I mean, we can always nip down the offie, innit? Don't be worrying about that. No need. Got plenty here. God, I can't even afford a can of lemon and that's skint. Right, better get these lemons cut up. Ah, oh, have you got any maple syrup, Jim? Mm, yeah. yeah. OK. For the pancakes. <laughs> this is Liverpool, not Los Angeles. We have lemon juice and sugar on our pannies here. What was that done? I don't know, you've been skimming for root beer and candy bars next. Do you know something? This country is losing its cultural identity every day. Wearing yes. baseball caps, referring to each other as guy. What's all that about? I'm so not going there. When are you going to give Nicky the you know what? Oh, not yet. After the pancakes and all. I can't wait. It's just going to be pure meat. What brought all this on? I thought you were over the worst. So did I. I saw Ron Dixon's release date on Jackie's calendar. Oh, right. When is it? 30 years too early. Yeah, well, it was going to happen sooner or later. You knew he'd save less than a year. Yeah. But seeing it written there, you know, amongst all the usual day-to-day -day stuff, it brought it home. I mean, Thursday the 4th, Harry's dentist appointment. Friday the 5th, Cold Blood's a killer released from jail. Well, you're going to have to ignore it and get on with your life. I have tried, but I can't. I mean, I feel worse now than when it first happened. At least then I was numb with shock. Now I just dwell on it all the time. But that'll change. It won't. No matter what you or anyone else says, this feeling is never going to go away. And it'll just get worse when I see the person responsible for it walking around free. You just in time. Put your names down for the competition, yeah? Oh, Sounds good for me, the creeps. You know, after all that went on here. Oh, that George Ash fellow's probably stabbed right where we're standing. Oh, stop it. Hey, at least we haven't come with a barbecue. You were stuck under that patio for over a year. Right, where do you? Oh, you were saying to die before. Sorry, Mark, got my hands. Well, here, I'll speak to you in a minute. Right, who's going to take on Anthony? I've got that one now. Woo! And you're coming through, look. This is stupid. I don't know why. It's cool as well. Well, perhaps your mum thought you might enjoy it. A pancake party. Oh, yeah, great. Aunt's having a nice time. Don't you think it's sad that his only mate is a 50-year-old ex-mental patient? Oh, sorry, that's because I took my eyes off it. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, out back with it. Go on. One fire on the clothes is quite enough. You're not kidding. Jimmy, back the break-in. You haven't told anyone about it, have you? No, of course not. Listen, your secret is safe. As long as you lot keep stumped. Me and Tim won't tell a soul. He knows as well. But of course, just listen. If I hadn't turned up and I had, he'd have been nicked as well as being planted by your Steve. What are you going on about? You've got to sort out who's next for the pancakes, Tim. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. I want to know what Tim's got to do with the burglary in our house. <laughs> Nothing. Come on. No, not till you tell me all about it. <sighs> Drop it, die. No, I want to know the truth. If Tim had something to do with that break-in, I'm calling the police. Be quiet, will you? Oh, give us a minute, will you, Jim? Yeah, sure. You've got some explaining to do, and fast. Seeing as how we had all that stuff, Nick, I thought it was only right that the insurance company should pay out. You mean you set up the burglary? Yeah, but... You disgust oh, me. Oh, look at... This is next round. Well done, sir. How could you? Not here, eh, Di? Not now. Just think about Ant. <sighs> what will that solve? It's rich coming from you, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, we'll call it the voice of experience. That's not the answer, believe me. Well, a mug of hot chocolate is. Yeah, well, it'll help you have a good night's sleep. <sighs> the first time in months. Well, drinking yourself to sleep doesn't help. It only makes the nightmares scarier. My life is one big nightmare. It's my birthday soon, and what have I got to celebrate? Last year, I was with Clint. We went to Max's place with Robbie and Jackie, and we were all happy. 
We're all looking forward to the future. If a dream come true, I'd found a good-looking fella who was kind and caring, and he loved the bones of me. And to top it all off, my best mate had copped off with his brother. I couldn't have asked for more. Should have known it was too good to be true. And does Casey Rogers ever get what she wants? I'll get to keep it. What happened to that one, Ant? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that Ant have such a good laugh for ages. How could you? Come on, Mart. It's your turn next. I thought some smackhead had been through me things that I find out it's just next door. Scally, in there on your invitation. I told him he didn't forget it. He said he was just trying to make it look authentic. Well, you knew the last thing I needed right then was stress. You could have jeopardised me fertility treatment. I thought it would be straightforward. Tim was just supposed to break in, make it look like we'd had loads of stuff taken, and then go. <sighs> then our Steve came back early and caught him at it. Oh, this just gets worse. What if Steve had done her on Dixon? There's knives and things in our house. Steve could have clobbered him one with something and got accused of murder. I know you'd exaggerate. Tell that to Ron Dixon and Katie Rogers. All I was trying to do was get back what was rightfully ours. If that insurance company would have paid up in the first place, I wouldn't have had to do it. That's another thing. If they'd found out the truth, it could have been done for fraud. But they never did. And they never paid out on the claim either. That claims assessor knew we were up to something, and he was right, only I never knew. Oh, I had a right girl with him, the shame of it. Sorry. I suppose you asked our Steve to lie for you as well. I didn't want to upset you. Well, you have, Marty. More than you know. Hey, Mark, come ahead. You're not supposed to be playing Tim for a place in the Grand Tossa. Oh, beat it with you, Jimmy. You and your big mouth have got me into all kinds of lumber. Stick your pancakes up your... Charming. And that I'm an acting head caretaker. Oh, hard luck. Maybe we should try next year in the ball. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you'll have to do it without me. You mean you're not on me back? I made up my mates again, but... I can't go back. Oh, I'm sorry, I really am. Look, you don't need me to make Bev's bar a success. You'll manage, I know you will. Come on. You do know I'm grateful, don't you? You're helping me as much as I'm helping you. My life was starting to fall apart, again. Me and Richard were going nowhere. But you gave me somewhere to go, something to focus on. You mean my troubles make yours seem like nothing? No, that I've got someone who I care about and someone who cares about me. You didn't feel like that when I started poking me nose in about Louise going to school. Well, you were just trying to do your best. So were you. I slagged you off for it. I thought you were being selfish, sending us to school on our own, but you weren't. Louise is lucky she's got someone who cares about her. We both are. Maybe we should both be a bit more grateful in future. Well, we could start by turning to one another and not to that. Yeah. <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, bit of hush, please. Nicky, bit of hush. Now we've got our two grand finalists. First up, Anthony the Pancake Kid Murray. <laughs> and Jerome the Frying Pan King Johnson. <laughs> Both are now going to compete in our grand finale toss-off. Stop it. <laughs> but first up, I want to thank you all for coming to our little party. Have you all had a good time? Yeah. yeah. Now, you're more than welcome to carry on drinking, you know, if you want. But before we find out who our grand champion is, I would just like to point out that life... Life is like pancakes in a pan. Full of ups and downs. But whether you like it or not, you're always at the mercy of tossers. <laughs> right, finalists, take your positions, please. <laughs> On your marks, get set and toss. Yeah! What's up with your gob? I'm bored. Enjoy yourself, can't you? Yeah? I don't see why I can't just go home. I'm sick of being treated like a little kid. It oh, would really. help, I know. It would yeah, help I'm 16. I'm old enough to do what I want. I don't think your mum and dad would agree with that. I don't care. They're just going to have to deal with the fact that I'm an adult and I'm going to start behaving like one. And when exactly do you intend to start exercising this newfound independence? When I go away on holiday with my mates. <laughs> oh, yes. Where are you going to? Are you laughing? in Cyprus. That den of iniquity that's always in the newspapers. I'm sure your mum and dad are very pleased about that. Well, I haven't told them yet. You mean you haven't asked them as if they'd say yes? Well, I don't need their permission. I'm going, and that's it. That's it, Anthony! I'm a winner. Me, do you know after that little talk and then about you being broken? 
not being able to afford to stay on at uni, but I decided to get you a little present to cheer you up. All right. Oh, thanks, Em. Well, are you going to have one? No, thanks, now. I'm absolutely stuffed. Oh, my favourites. Oh, do you want one, Bridget? No! It's meant to be his present. Sorry. Em, um, what was that about? I've been holding that. Where are they going? Uh, no, just leave them a minute. Em's got a present for Nicky. <laughs> what? She wait and see. Jim, um, thanks for the invite. Oh, uh, nice. Getting back to the bar. No, I'm going to give it a miss tonight. I'm going to pick Josh up instead. Wise move. I think the bar's more or less ready for the big day anyway. Listen, I'm sure everything will be fine with the bar, but even if it isn't, just remember there's more important things than work. And um, what's this all about? Open it and have a look. I've told you I'm full. Nicky! <gasps> what's this? What's it look like? What? Look, Nicky, it's a present off me and Tim. I know we can't tell you what to do with your life, but I hope if this money sorts out some of your debts, then maybe you'll stay on at uni. Well? Thanks, Sam. I really appreciate the thought, but I can't accept this. No, we can afford it. Tim's doing really well for himself. I'm sorry. But I thought you were broke. I am, but I can't take that money. Why not? Because I know where it came from. Or that I don't know. I don't even want to know either. Hey, look, it's off me and that's all should matter. It's off Tim, man. And I know he hasn't earned it. Not legally, anyway. Why does it bother you if it's going to hit your degree? If I accepted that money, it'd play on me conscience. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not like you. I can't just take something without questioning where it came from. I really do appreciate you trying to help me, Em, but I'm sorry, I can't take your money. Nick, what's going on? Em? She wouldn't take it. Yeah, well, she's probably just embarrassed or ashamed or something. She'd change her mind. She won't. She knows where it's come from. If I had to find it myself, then she would have took it straight away. She must be ashamed of me. You don't be soft. She is. Why else wouldn't she take it? She hates me. I know she does. I've arranged a Valentine's night out for me and you. You haven't been playing silly beggars again, have you? What are you talking about now? This Valentine's Day card for Anthony. You haven't sent it, have you? I know how you and Tim got that money. This place will be buzzing again, I'm telling you. Don't you be worrying. Jesse, have you got a problem with me? Yes, I have, actually. Forever. <laughs> That's to come in tomorrow's Brookie at 8.30. Next up tonight, our experts have tracked down six prime properties in Aberdeen with the potential to be a stylish bachelor pad. Location, 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 coming up.